Hey guys, welcome back to Bitcoin Stuff with Daniel Krawitz. This episode is on why you don't want to be a trader, no matter how glamorous it sounds to be able to make extra cash by psychoanalyzing the market. This advice is good for all investment, but trading is particularly a problem in Bitcoin because Bitcoin is crazy and everyone in Bitcoin is crazy. Now, the allure of trading is that if you can correctly predict short-term price movements with a better than 50-50 probability, you can increase your expected rate of return. Now, first of all, I think it's ridiculous that people think they, they can predict short-term price movements because the market is anti-inductive. So you understand it one day, that means you don't understand it the next day. Anti-inductive means the very process of trying to understand it makes it more complicated. Okay, so I don't think that anyone really can predict short-term price movements with a higher than 50-50 probability over time. But for the sake of argument, let's say that you can and Therefore, you can increase your expected rate of return by being a trader. What people don't think about is there is no contradiction between uh, having a higher expected rate of return and also having a higher expected probability of being totally wiped out at some point in the future. And, but the probability of being wiped out, that's more important, okay? So these two things can happen at the same time and people don't think about the more important effect here. Over time, every investment strategy eventually becomes more, de more dependent on luck than on skill. And, and what I mean by that is if you take if you group people by their investment strategy, eventually you get to a point where the people remaining in the group is effectively random. In other words, you could not have predicted who they were going to be, you know, based on who they were when they started. It's effectively random. Now, if you are a trader, that happens more quickly because you are taking on more risk. You, uh, you are always a finite number of mistakes away from being wiped out. And by wiped out, I mean your money level is so low that you're effectively out of the game. You might as well not try until you get a new source of money. And who knows when that's going to happen. You're always a finite number of mistakes away and Eventually, you will definitely make enough mistakes in a row to wipe you out. Because the probability of making a mistake is non-zero, so there's a non-zero probability of making enough in a row to wipe you out. It's that simple. Eventually, you will be wiped out by making enough mistakes in a row that you're out of the game. Over time, that's what matters. The people who have a bigger mistake buffer are the ones who last, not the people with the highest expected rate of return. The people with the biggest mistake buffer are the ones who last because they're the people whose decisions matter for a longer time in the future. Now you can have lots of money and still have a small mistake buffer. Okay? So if you're a trader, no matter how successful you are at it, you're always anxious until you stop because you have a lower mistake buffer. But if you have, uh, and you can also have a big mistake buffer with a relatively small amount of money. Now, 
money on its own does not buy happiness, but a big mistake buffer does buy happiness because you can relax. You don't have to worry as much. It gives you peace of mind, okay? So that's why you don't want to be a trader, okay? You're always unhappy and you don't last as long. Now, if you have a bigger mistake buffer, you also have more learning experiences. So that's great because that's, you know, mistakes are what produces learning. So if you have a big mistake buffer, you'll last longer over time and you'll be more knowledgeable over time. So that's good. That's very good. Everybody should do things that way. But now there is one problem I have discovered with having a big mistake buffer. That is sometimes you want more learning experiences than other people. Or I should say the problem is if you have a big mistake buffer and other people don't have a big mistake buffer, that's where the problem happens because you can want more learning experiences. You can, you can really, you can, you can want more mistakes because that's more learning experiences. So, uh, but if you want that, what that means for other people is that they're more likely to be wiped out. Okay. So you, you want, so you're wanting more learning experiences means for other people, they're more likely to get wiped out. That's a problem because when you start talking about it, other people get scared. Um, so like I, I want Bitcoin to be more crazy and chaotic because I think that Bitcoin is anti-fragile, so craziness is good. But, uh, you know, other people are not in as good a position to benefit from the craziness, apparently, because whenever I talk about it, people get mad at me. So, well, my response to that is, you know, do, do things my way, okay? Then, then you'll be happy with me. 